prayer, O Yahuwah, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me, I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is so pain within me, the terrors of death are follow, fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. Oh, and that I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Lo, when I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness, Salah, I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O oh, Yahweh, the divide and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. The day and night they go about it upon the walls there are mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof, deceit and guile depart not from their streets. For it was not an enemy that had reproached me when I could have borne it, neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and talked unto the house of God in company. Let death seize upon them and let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon Yahuwah, and the I Am shall save me. Even the morning at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. God shall hear and afflict them. He shall abide. He that abide of old, Selah, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. The words of his mouth are smoother than butter, but war was at his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Thy, cast thy burden upon the I am, and he shall sustain thee, and he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. Psalms chapter 55. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have swelled the thoughts of men's hearts, and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me and my seed that we go not astray henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yes, all praises, all praises to the Most High. Yes, all glory to his holy name. Yes, 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 eventually we're going to come up on a new month. I'm talking about a new godly month. I ain't talking about this Greco-Roman month. We thank God for the downfall of this Greco-Roman system. It's about to fall. It's about to fall. Yes, it's about to fall. Yes, yes, yes. And this supremacist type deal, I'm better than you because of the skin color that I have or the hue that I have or the straightness of my hair. I'm better than you. I got good hair, they say. But more than that, God is to be praised because he will bring down the haughty. Yes, he will. And the valley shall be exalted. Stay humble, my friend. Stay thirsty before the Most High. Yes, for his statutes, laws, commandments, and ordinances. History is good. It's something to be, to understand and know. And to know who you are is good too. But to know that you are keeping in adherence to the commandment, statutes, and ordinances of the Most High is better than life itself. Even gold and diamonds, yes. Ah, oh, God is good, God is good, for He shall sustain you. See, our, 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 our mindset is that to be rich. You know, sometimes I find myself to think such things. 
you know, what if I was rich, I would do this. What I really, I say to myself sometimes, what I really do as I said I would if I were to have millions and billions of dollars, would I do this? I don't know. But the fact is, I do know by watching others that many probably meant good when they started, but when the money started rolling in, the demons start coming. The thoughts start infiltrating. False and fake friends come and give you a uh, sweet, smooth, buttery-like scenario of what it would be like if you would do this, how you can make more. But then some go broke real quick because they came all of a sudden overnight and they decided, I'm going to party. Never thinking that you still got to live and don't know how long you're going to live. And that is a dilemma. But we're given the seasons, days, times, hours, minutes, seconds that man might number his days. Man might number his days. But nevertheless, we're in the book of First Kings. First Kings. First Kings. Yes. All praises to the Most High. We're going to get to that point of the, the prophets eventually. But we're not going to do... Uh, Proverbs, we're not going to do Ecclesiastes, and we're not going to do the Song of Solomon, but we're going to incorporate them into like we're doing the Psalms. Once we finish the Psalms, we went over it once, and then we're going to incorporate that into our other readings and studies. Yes, as a, a meditative thing, a thing to think about before we get into the chapter that we're expounding on in that time so the wisdom and the should i say the songs and should i say poetic books we will go through them but they will be like one at a time as we go through the other books so after we get through the book of job which is really a prophetic book and it tells a lot about god once we get to that book, we go into Isaiah, Jeremiah, you know, all the prophetic books. Now, this is where it's going to really trip you out because the fact is, listening to men, you start delving into things that are not good. But when you actually read the scripture and the thought of the one who wrote it, the life and thought of the one who wrote that, that, that book or that paragraph, the, the, the life and the thought of the one who thought. And then you think about, let's, let's think about now, we're in the book of First and Second Kings. Let's look at it. But now we're finna go in, we're not finna, finna, finna. That's my countryside. But either way, we're getting ready to go into the um, book of First Kings. And chapter 1. Now David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Have you ever noticed, if you ever had your parents in your home, that uh, your parents would get colder, the circulation would not circulate as good, and they would be in the bed mostly. But is that to be? Can that be? Many, a lot of it they say today is because of diet. Because of diet or lack of this and that. You have to have a well-balanced diet. Vegetables, more vegetables and little and less meat. Period. More vegetables, breads. I'm talking about if you can get breads. Breads that are, you can make your own bread. You even done, you done real good. Vegetables growing out your garden, you done eating better. And meats here and there. Because you have to realize we can eat vegetables. I mean, have you ever had fried cauliflower or have you ever had uh, just potatoes and onions? Just ball them up and put them in a deep fry and just let them fry and eat them. Just potatoes and onions, plain old potatoes and onions. Yes. Well, you can fry them in a pot, you know, with a little oil and you, you've done very good. But now David, he got no heat. Circulation was coming down his heart, slowing. 
to a crawl, but this is all by design of the Most High. When God says your time is up, it don't matter how good you eat. It doesn't matter how much you scratch and crawl and go to the doctors. It doesn't matter. Your time is up. That's why it's so good to stay in tune with the Most High. He'll let you know when your time is about to come. God will. The Most High. Sanini, Nainini, Dada, and Zambi. Hey, even Ya Allah, even Yahweh, Yahuwah. He will let you know. He's only one. I'm talking about one entity. That's it. I'm not talking about a bunch of gods. No, I'm talking about one God. Just known by many names. But the fact is, is that he will let you know when your time is coming. Now, you know, your odds are up. If you're in a dangerous situation, your, your odds have climbed. If you're in war, yes, it can be. You're a woman walking along the streets at night. When nobody with you, your odds, your odds go up. Even a man walking by himself in the streets at night, his odds go up. Even in the daytime, depending on where you're walking or where you're going, that's why you must also be aware of your surroundings. And you should also carry your power tools at times when you know where you're about to go. Some people are just scary anyway, but either way, Verse 2, Wherefore a servant said unto him, Let there be sought for my king a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. Or is it his heart might speed up because of his desire to water. Now David had enough of that. I mean, sending Israel into a downward spiral because of his not thinking about what is going through his head when he got up. Why am I getting up, number one? Number two, why am I looking at this woman that is more likely that of what God, of the people that God told them to erase out of the, God erased most of them, but he told them to erase the remainder of them and they did not do it. And Hittite, more likely both of them were Hittites. Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, whom David murdered because he had, for he had commanded his wife to lay with him because he couldn't help himself. Now, Israel had went through so many things. I mean, Israel had went through so many splits that you have Israel and now you have Judah and Benjamin even in the time of David. They wasn't a split during the time of Saul, but it was Saul's foolishness in going ahead of the Most High and not seeking him for his will before he made a move. This was mostly Saul's fault. David was keeping his pants on. Basically, if you would look at it, I mean, it's amazing that he would say, well, why this feeling did not come if we with Abigail, the wife of Nabal? Why did this not come, this feeling come to me when I had Michelle, most beautiful daughter of Saul? And then the other wives that he had, why didn't this, that I can just call one at a whim? Well, I can say, find me a beautiful virgin and I'll marry her. I just, I just want to, I just want to be with her. But it had to be this one woman. You know that's demonic in itself. And man, when something come on you like that, it's best for you to find cold waters, the Bible, get around people, run. Because it's demonic. Go to church, pray. See, these things the devils know that you, you are not going to suspect. Other things you will suspect, but this... He know you will not. And then women will lie and tell you they're not married just as well as men will. These things, man, you better watch. But either way, that feeling didn't come on him with this beautiful virgin just probably 10, 20 times, I mean a 10 over Bathsheba. And they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found Abishag. Very beautiful Shunammite, dark skin. These Shunammite women were dark and beautiful. 
I mean, looking like dolls. Not with the straight hair, but they had the nappy hair. With the, oh, yes, beautiful, flawless skin. I mean, and because of their having, from their youth up, having to walk and work, their bodies were shaped in that which is globally acceptable. Yes. And brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king. Yes, and minister him. She cherished him probably because he was an old man. <laughs> but she knew he was the king either way. She knew she had to do what she had to do. But he, but he, the king, knew her not. He did not lay with her. He couldn't, couldn't do nothing. There was nothing there. So God showing him, this is, the, this is a Satan doing this to you. you. Have done this and caused Israel to fall henceforth and unto this day. Come on, this day. And so, the damsel, and he said, and Adonijah, 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 yes, Adonijah, the son of Higgith, exalted himself, I will be king, and he will prepare him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. See, this is the thing that, that, that you have with a king, see, a king that, see, God already knew the hearts of these people. This is the son of David. The son of David. People were doing everything, treating David as though they would God. See, God, all he asked, all he asked was that you just sacrificed, uh, should I say, lambs and bullocks. And just, hey, you drank whatever you want to do. You're going to pay for it. You better do it how God says. He didn't say nothing about marijuana. He didn't say nothing about none of that stuff. But the fact he said that, he said drunkenness. See, they didn't have that then, but we have to sublimate that into drunkenness. In other words, you get to an addiction of alcohol. You get to an addiction of marijuana. You get to addiction of all kinds of drugs. It's a type of drunkenness. It falls under that. Woe to the drunkards of Ephraim. Woe to the drug addicts. Woe to those who push needles and smoke marijuana until their heart pounds so hard that they don't know if they're going to live or die. And those who put their cells, taking unknown drugs and put themselves in a frenzy, they lose all reality. Yes, these things is what God is talking about. Don't get it wrong just because it's not their drunkenness. We have to make a call a buck a buck. Now, and he conferred with Joab, the son of Zariah. No, after this, let's go to verse 6. And his father had not displeased him in any time. Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. Okay. Who was his mother? Was it Bathsheba? Who was his mother? And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abathar, the priest. I can imagine he was the high priest at the time. And they followed Adonijah and helped him. But Zodok, the priest, now Abathar, but you have Zodok and I, but they were priests, probably sons of Aaron. But Abathar, I believe, was a son of Aaron. And Zodak probably was too, because they could only be the high priests according to the laws, statutes, and commandments, and ordinances of the Most High. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rai, and the mighty men which belonged to David were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle by stone of Zohilith, which is by Enro, and Rojo, and called all his brethren the king's son, and all the men of Judah's, the king's servants. But Nathan the prophet, now Nathan is back on the scene. There are a few prophets named here. And Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, and the mighty men, and Solomon's his brother, he called not. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Higgith, the son of Higgith, I guess Higgith is the wife, Doth reign and David, our Lord, does not know it. 
Higgith. Who is Higgith? Now, thou, now therefore, come let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel, that thou mayest save thine own life. And of thy son, Solomon. He says now, he's the son of Higgith. Now, let's note that. Adonijah was the son of Higgith. Now, Higgith was whose son? Was he David's son? Okay, that's something to be considered. Maybe I missed something there. Yes. And so get thee unto King David and say unto him, Dost thou not my lord or my king? Didst not my king swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Surely Simon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth I deny your reign? Behold, while thou yetest, in other words, this guy was not even near to where Solomon was because he, maybe he was a son of Solomon who had a grand, who had a son and this was his grandson. Okay. Now, and thy son shall reign after me and he shall sit upon thy throne. Why then doth I deny your reign? Behold, while thou talkest here with the king, I will also come in after thee and confirm the words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber. They had to realize Bathsheba probably was a very young woman at the time that David was tempted. Because she wasn't tempted. She just followed the orders of her king. So the fact is, was now... Bathsheba went into the king, into went unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. See, David couldn't do nothing no more. He was stricken in years, times up. Israel is split. I mean, this is in the heart of people. The split is there. It's already there. All is asking for is someone to come and totally split them out of the land and from each other forever even to this day. And Bathsheba bowed and did obscience unto the king and said to the king, What wouldest thou? And she said unto him, Okay. She said, My lord, swear thou by thee, I am God unto thy handmaid, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall be king after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And behold, I deny reigneth. Now we go to 19. And he slain, he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called all the sons of the king and Abathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant hath he not called. Something's wrong here. And thou, my king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of the king after him. Now, this is the seed of David, number one, by commandment of the Most High. The seed of David, from that on his seed line. We ain't talking about the mama, we talking about the seed line. For some of their mothers were not even Israelites. Now, even Bathsheba. So it's a seed line. That's why I say the woman really is transitional between nations. I put it that way. When she marries, she marries into this nation, that, that people, that tribe, that family. Yes, she does. But the seed is of the man, regardless. She can go back home, but that child belongs to the family of that man. According to this narrative and according to the Bible and the holy text, According to the Hebraic holy text, we put it that way. Now, this matriarchy system is not of God. That these, the spirit that is in a lot of these women, not all, a good many, not all, but there are many that go along with, and with this matriarchy system, comes along with effeminacy and all kind of 
should I say, doleful and hurtful things. And thou, and we shall see this throughout the books of Kings and Chronicles, and thou, my king, the eyes of Israel are upon thee. He said, now tell him who's going to be on the throne, verse 21. Otherwise it shall come to pass when the king shall sleep with his fathers that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. Now, it's, it's, the, so, the David promise her this because of his guilt, because of what he did to her, her this, uh, murdered husband. It's one thing if he was in battle and got was slain before this happened and he laid with her. But the fact is it was while yet he was at his fighting for Israel. And they told the king saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet came in and they told, saying, Nathan the prophet and when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground because he's anointed of the most high. Not because he had any great wisdom or anything. He was king by appointment of the creator of all the universe because of the choice that Israel made unscrupulously. unscrupulously. <laughs> Respectfully. <coughs> Excuse me. And behold, Nathan the prophet, when he came in before the prince, he bowed himself down in verse 24 and said, my king, as thou said, I deny you shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. For he has gone down this day and have slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and have called the king's sons and the captains of the host, and Abathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him and say, God save king Adonijah. But me, even thy servant, and Zorak the priest, and Benaiah, and the son of Jehoiada, the son of Jehoiada, the servant of Solomon, of thy servant Solomon, hath he not called? Is this thing by my king? Or hast thou not showed it unto thy servant who would sit on the throne of my king after him? Then David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As the I am liveth that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress. This is where you got the Psalms from. Say David was a poetic man. He was one who would sing and play the harp. From a child he, would, he learned these things. And the Psalms that you have mostly in the Psalms is him singing of, of how God had delivered him and the things that were surrounding about him and the things he suffered. This is what he was saying. Many of it, some of it we would say was prophetic and all that stuff, but I want you to take these things that they say is prophetic and leave them. Unless it come from a prophet, don't take it as prophetic. Because this is how they've swayed you over into the New Testament like that. So how they swayed you. You call it like you call it. David suffered. Wasn't nothing prophetic about what he said unless he said, in some instances, God said, he said God had given him this word. As you read in the book of 2 Samuel, I believe the last, yeah, the last chapter, chapter 24, I think. Yes, and so, I swear to thee, and the king swearing as the I am liveth that redeemed my soul of all, out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the God of Israel, saying, Surely Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Even so will I certainly do this day. Verse 31, And Bathsheba bowed her face to the earth and did reverence the king and said, Let my king... David lived forever. Now, notice one thing about these people. Especially the wife. She didn't come fussing at him like you see in the pictures of a European wife like that. 
she always reverenced her king. But the fact is, the child, although he had relations with his father, the mother was still in his life until he gained a wife. The mother was still in his life. The, wo the woman, she would still nurture the son to a certain extent. Until he went off to war or he had a wife and he had his own children and he would take care of his father and mother. But the fact is, is the mother would always be there because that was her baby. We understand the woman was nurturing. You have to study the lion a little bit to understand this thing. See, this is where we went off through the deceitfulness of what we have, the liberalism of today. We've went off the beaten path. We've gone to a path that's even more beaten wide and few follow the old traditional ways of the way the man and the woman served each other. It was different. But now we get to the point where the woman, many times we hear stories. I ain't gonna say the woman does it, but we hear stories where the woman would go lay with another man and have the baby and next thing you know, this man raised the baby all some never even find out the child was never theirs. Gone to the grave. The woman gone to the grave. Maybe the woman. And then later on, the child finds out that wasn't really your father. And you say, how evil can a person be? Now, that's on the woman's behalf to be that evil. And it's also on the other man's behalf to be that evil also. In, in other words, knowing that the woman is married, if you know if she's married to another man, you honor the other. And God is how you feel about it. Honor the other man. It will go well with you. Not just by him, but by your death. Just get away from me. You're married. Bye. This is the way we should be. This is the way a lot of men still are. You're married. Bye. See, you look for a ring on the finger. A lot of times women will take it off. Ask them. And by asking them, you probably can figure her out because she's going to there are different body gestures they do when they lie. And Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my king David live forever. <laughs> In other words, the old Christian saying, God bless you. <laughs> Here he is dying. How are you going to live forever? The only way he can live forever is through his seed. And this seed that he had with Bathsheba was by design. It started out good and it ended up evil, as we shall see. And David said, Call me Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Beniah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. And the king said to them, Take, you, take with you the servants of your king and call Solomon my son to ride upon my own mule and bring him down to Gihon. And Zadok, and let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there king over Israel and blow ye the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Now that's, it wasn't supposed to be a split of Judah and Israel, but this thing was still going on. It was still in the hearts of the people. Just took something to spark it again. And with that, we're going to stop at verse 34 and continue later. And if we do those things which are right before the Most High, making God king, who's our original creator, our king, all that is said is our God. But we put our trust in flesh and the arm of flesh many times and lose our sight of him who have created all things and who can preserve us. He can preserve us even up to a time of Adam lived 900 and something years, so it is said. But the fact is, is that if you should love life and you want to see long days, you're going to have to please God, period. That's it. And with that, we're going to say peace. Walk with me.